If you're a pilot, a radio aficionado, as in shortwave listening or ham radio, anyone who's interested in astronomy or anybody who's interested in geography, you probably know about the Prime Meridian. The Prime Meridian was set by humans. It's not a natural object. And it was set in this spot about 140 years ago. And it marks zero degrees longitude and is referenced by every geographical coordinate around the world. Anything to the west of here is considered minus degrees all the way around to the international date line on the other side of the earth where it becomes plus 180 degrees and works its way around back here from the east. The prime meridian was set to assist with naval navigation and coordinate setting back when ships were king. Since then with GPS, LORAN, other navigation systems including the GPS you would have in your car, on your phone, your handheld Garmin or Magellan GPS. Everything is based on this datum line which is zero degrees. For someone like me who loves astronomy, who loves ham radio and who's a pilot, it's a bit of a privilege uh, to be here in Greenwich. The standard time signal for the planet was based on the time here, which was originally called Greenwich Mean Time. Now the signal is called Coordinated Universal Time, but a lot of people still refer to it as GMT. And this is my first trip to the Eastern Hemisphere. The Prime Meridian actually runs through those trees back there. And if you pay to get into the museum, they have a, a brass plate or a steel plate along the ground that you can look at. But you don't need to pay to see the Prime Meridian. You just have to be around this area and walk across the Prime Meridian with a GPS and you'll know when you're on it. So it's, it's a fantastic trip. This is a part of the things that any geography geek has to do if they're ever in the London area. We had a nice trip here. We took uh, the tube all the way to the bank station and then through a bunch of elevators we ended up on the Dockland, Docklands Railway Line and uh, we got off at Cuddy's Ark, which is down uh, near the shore, and came through Greenwich Park in a beautiful neighborhood down there where we had breakfast. And then we walked up a pretty steep climb to get here. And uh, it'll be a much nicer walk going back down. I'm going to browse around a bit, do a little B-roll here, and uh, show you the sights of Greenwich. <laughs> Back after day three out and about in London and it was another big heavy day. We had planned to go to Hampton Court and visit the Palace of Henry VIII and uh, all of the other history that surrounds that period of time. However, our plans were changed because the Southwest Rail folks advised that for the entire day the train line from Waterloo to Hampton was going to be down because of a, an accident or a service work or a problem with a switch or something. We dangled and dangled for a little while to see if there was any chance that might recover in time. It seemed to be a bad day outside the city for railway problems. Inside the city things seemed to be quite fine. So we could have gotten ourselves to Waterloo Station, boarded the train for Hampton Court. Our plan was to spend half the day there and then cross eastbound over to Greenwich and spend the other half of the day in Greenwich. So with Hampton Court unavailable, at least by the easy way, there's other ways to get to Hampton Court, but that's the way we wanted to go, and that was the most efficient way to go, 
If we went by river bus, it was going to take a lot longer. If we went by a regular street bus, who knows how long that would take. Some of the apps were telling me it was going to be upwards of two hours from here to there, which is just nuts. So we decided we would cancel Hampton Court for today. We went to Greenwich instead in the morning. We got there before noontime, wandered around, had a little quick breakfast in a cafe there, uh, then went up to the park. We didn't stay too long at the park. Wandered around, I, I fiddled around at the Prime Meridian, recorded a vlog, uh, lo a vlog chapter at least, took some pictures from up on the hill, which was lovely, and got a really nice view of Canary Wharf, the Olympic Stadium, downtown London, all really in one shot. I did it in a panorama on my phone, and it turned out pretty good. So pretty happy about that. Uh, then from there, we went back onto the Docklands Railway, the DLR train, and then we went back into London, and went to the British Museum. Now this was a stop we had planned to make on Thursday in, no Wednesday, in two weeks time. Uh, we were going to have basically three quarters of a day back in London after our circle around Britain. So uh, we were going to do the King's, or sorry, the uh, British History Museum uh, there at that time because it was going to be close to our second hotel where we will be staying. Uh, we decided to pivot a little bit and we did the British Museum today, which was lovely, a very interesting place. We had no time to see all of it. We had no time to see even the pieces of it that we wanted to see. Maybe I'll talk about that in more detail some other time in a, in a tip video or something. Uh, but we spent several hours there. Then we went to a nice place for uh, supper called Maxwell's. That was down in the Covent Garden area where there's lots of uh, nice shops and things. We had a great supper there. Um, Janice did a little shopping, uh, or a little browsing at least, didn't come out with anything as usual. And then we uh, had a bit of an odyssey on the way back. We went back to King's Cross Railway Station firstly to register our Brit Rail passes and get them validated so we could use those for our train travel starting tomorrow as we head for Southport. And we wanted to reserve some seats on the Virgin train which we did do. They were kind enough to uh, set aside two seats together for us, so we're quite happy about that. And then from King's Cross back to here, we had a bit of a hiccup. The uh, subway system got fouled up in some way. I don't know what happened, but we all piled onto a train that was supposed to take us on the last leg of our journey, which was supposedly the Circle Line train, uh, which was <laughs> which was going to come here to Bayswater. <clears throat> After we, we and not just Janice and I, but hundreds of people, were sitting on the train and had sat there for quite some time. The announcement came on that uh, although the sign says this is the Circle Line train, it is not. It's actually a Hammersmith train and if we don't want to go to Hammersmith we should get off and the Circle Line train will be along very soon. So we all piled off the train, stood around. None of the boards made any sense for a while. They finally got things programmed. The proper train did show up. On we got and we concluded our journey. But we sat there um, oh, probably at Earl's Court for must have been 20 or 25 minutes before we got rolling again. So anyway, um, just learn some lessons about how to pivot and how to be aware of your geography a little bit when you're taking the trains and just maneuvering and navigating around the city. So I have some thoughts that I've uh, already started to type out of my Chromebook as to tips I could give if I were to make a video for tips on traveling to London for North Americans or maybe broadly tips on traveling to the UK for North Americans. I may try to do that and roll it all up once I get back. But learned a lot, took some notes, had a great day, got some fabulous pictures, visited the Prime Meridian which I was very excited about and in my geeky way. And tomorrow we're looking forward to getting out of the city, getting into the countryside a little bit, Southport followed by Dumfries, Scotland, uh, a very quiet night on the Isle of Arran, a couple of days in Glasgow and then north farther into Scotland after that. So very excited about the trip that is to come. We've had a fantastic stay here in London. We're quite tired and the train trip tomorrow of some three hours or so all together will be a nice relaxing way to unwind a little bit before we start phase two. <music>